Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Okay, welcome to the Professor Podcast. I'm C.D., And I'm Claire, and today we're going to talk about sabbaticals. But first, CD, how was your week? My week was uh, good. It was a little hectic. It's kind of getting toward the end of the semester, and I don't know, some students are falling behind, and, you know, so it's kind of trying to get get everybody on the same page so we can finish out the semester. It's been a little little tricky, but... um, it's fine. Busy, but okay. How about you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I know what you mean. Trying to get everybody a plan for exiting the class successfully. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my week was good. I, I had gotten behind on grading over the semester, which is like kind of a, a habit for me. And uh, Ralph suggested the brilliant strategy of um, I only eat M&Ms when I am grading. And I can eat <laughs> so we bought special M&Ms for grading. And... Um, That has been really helpful, although the first time I did eat quite a few M&Ms, and then I was like, okay, maybe I don't Mm -hmm. like M&Ms anymore. But it's Mm -hmm. been working really well. It's, you know, like, that's just a classic idea of, like, pairing something you like with something you don't like, but I've never, I don't know if I've ever actually tried it until Yeah, that's a great idea. And I'm I'm a huge fan. (laughs) I'll I'll, (laughs) I'll need to try that, too. And I have an idea of a student or or two who's grading for me. Maybe I should try that with them, find out what they like, too. Oh, good idea. (laughs) They're getting behind as well. (laughs) Totally, totally. The other aspect to that, I guess, was Ralph was suggesting just just decide you're going to grade five. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole class. Right, right. Because that's just so daunting. <laughs> How many students are in your biggest I class? I only have 30, but okay. it's still, I don't know, even 10 lab reports is like, that's a lot of lab reports to grade. But five, oh, I can grade five, you know. Well, funny you say that because I have exactly five lab reports oh, really? sitting waiting to be graded that I've procrastinated for at least a week or two at this point. Maybe it depends how many students you have, how big (laughs) the lab report grading job. You know, like, I probably made them easy-ish to grade for 30, but still too hard. Right. You made it easy-ish, but still too hard for five. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. Well, there's, yeah, right. There's 19 students, but they group up, so there's... Oh, I see. Yeah. Only five is it, it's a, that sounds like kind of an involved, you've got like, how, do you give them all the same grade? What do you do in that situation? I do give them generally all the same grade unless somebody really doesn't contribute, which has happened. And then um, mm-hmm. we have to figure it out. But yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I have a quote today from the book Essentialism. Do you know this book? Greg I don't, actually. I really love this book. It's the subtitle is The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. And so it's like picking the things you want to do and getting rid of the other things so that you have time to do the things you want to do. Yeah. Um, and so the quote is about time for thinking. So he says, the faster and busier things get, the more we need to build thinking time into our schedule. And the noisier things get, the more we need to build quiet reflection spaces in which we can truly focus. Wow. And so I was yeah. thinking about this in the context of sabbaticals, because it does seem like sabbaticals are about essentialism and picking the thing that you're going to be working on for this time and cutting out other things for this temporary time period where you can really focus on it. I thought that was kind of an interesting, I hadn't really thought of sabbaticals in that light. Until yeah, just I think that's great. Yeah, that's, I agree. It's a really good way to put it. Cool. And... Have you done a sabbatical, Claire? No, my first sabbatical is scheduled to be next year. Awesome. So I've applied for it. I'm excited about it, but have not done it yet. Great. Are you going to take the full or half year? The full year. The yeah. full year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're excited. And you, how many sabbaticals have you done? So I've done two okay. full, full year um, periods of leave. The first was uh, technically a sabbatical, a full year sabbatical. Mm-hmm. But then I found out about the possibility of taking what's called a dip. And mm-hmm. I don't know if this is something that most places have or not, but um, it's called kind of difference in pay leave. And so it's basically for all, you know, practical purposes, the same as uh, a sabbatical. Mm-hmm. But the 
process for getting it approved is different. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And isn't it like you can go on a dip more frequently than a sabbatical because they're that, paying you a little bit less? Is that the idea? That's right. Here, um, as far as I understand, you can take a dip every four years versus mm-hmm. a sabbatical, which is every six. Mm-hmm. And I actually don't think there's a difference in the amount of pay. Oh, there um, isn't. Interesting. Not, not to my understanding. If there is, it's really tiny, I think. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, wait. No, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely depends on... Your rate of pay. Your rate of pay. That's right. So That makes sense. I think taking a dip as a full professor ends up being about the same as a sabbatical. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, I've done I've done two, and um, the last one was was interesting because uh, it got <laughs> interrupted by by the pandemic. So gosh, yeah. So what so what happened there? So you were in Italy, mm-hmm. and then halfway through the pandemic happened, and you came back. And so how did that work? Like you did you yeah. didn't really get to finish your sabbatical. What happened there? Yeah. So actually, both of my sabbaticals have been divided into two parts. So for each one, I kind of spent half of the sabbatical in one institution and the other half in another. Okay. And um, so this most recent sabbatical, uh, the first half of it, I was actually just here at um, our home institution working in my lab and trying to Mm -hmm. get some things done in the lab. And then the second half, which was spring 2020, was going to be in Naples, Italy. And um, so we ended up going to Naples in about December, and we had always had a trip back to the States planned for early March, uh, just to take care of some things at home. Mm-hmm. And we came back, and then we never went back to Italy. So, <laughs> <laughs> And there's still three suitcases of stuff in my friend's garage in Naples. So. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So... Um, so yeah, that was that was interesting. So I really only only got about two months of working in Italy on the uh, mm-hmm. experiment over there, and then of course, the, pretty much everything was shut down for a while. Totally. So, yeah. Totally. And then your first sabbatical was also split. Did you do mm-hmm. the first semester at the home institution and the second semester in Italy as well? Actually, I did it. It sorry. Um, actually, I did that one at two different institutions. So the first oh. half was at Harvard and the second half was in Trento, Italy. So um, I see I have some collaborators in various places in Italy. And so, so yeah, we did a, we did Boston and then Trento for that one. Cool. Yeah. That's neat. And that's the one where I showed up in Boston and the professor I was going to be working with, who incidentally was on my graduate like committee as well. So I Mm -hmm. knew him for a while and, he met me, he got off a plane from Chile, I think, met me in Cambridge for lunch, and then told me that he had just taken sabbatical and was going back to Chile for four months, and I wouldn't see him for the rest <laughs> of the time. <laughs> That's so funny. So you were working there mostly to work with him, but I assume mm-hmm. that you got to, did you still get to work in his lab, or how did that work? <laughs> I did. I worked with some of the, you know, the researchers in his lab, and so... Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a bit different than I had imagined. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> so, well, this is up. great. I'm, I'm really interested that, you know, you've got all these different experiences with sabbaticals. So what, what would you say is working for you with your sabbaticals so far? I definitely think, like what you said, that that time to just, um, you know, step back and reflect on what you're doing and just have that time to exactly when you don't have all the other obligations of teaching and service and things like that and I don't know I, I, what works for me is what has worked is it's been time to kind of reassess where I'm headed with my research directions and different mm-hmm. collaborations and things like that mm-hmm. and to be honest just having a, like a little time off of teaching every so often I feel like when I do come back I'm more engaged with the students and I see Mm-hmm. And a little, it kind of eases the burnout a little bit. So that's great. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, what are you planning? Do you know what you're planning? Yeah. You so 
Yeah, so we, yeah, I submitted the proposal earlier this semester. And yeah, so the plan is that basically I've got a bunch of projects that have gotten to the point of we have data, but we haven't finished interpreting it and publishing it yet. Um, so I want to finish and interpret and publish those. And then also next summer, I'm going on a two week research cruise in June. And then um, I'm going to process the samples from that cruise. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have another data set that I want to finish interpreting and publishing. So kind of just finishing up a bunch of things that um, some of which we already have been working on and some of which are going to stem from that cruise starting in the summer and getting them um, published and out the door. And then kind of once I have all those wrapping up, thinking about the next directions in research, kind of like you're saying. Great, great. So, so most of the time you'll be spending here. At... Well, most of the time is flexible about where we are. And so True. we're actually going to go to LA oh, and nice. spend this, the year in LA and be kind of um, just in a different setting. I'm really excited about mm -hmm. um, going somewhere with a nice change of pace, checking out a place we want to check out. We've been wanting to check out LA um, for lots of reasons, including the music scene there and really like getting involved in that. Yeah, so I'm really that excited great. about that. Yeah. yeah it's really exciting. Totally. Yeah. So so I guess what's working for me is the the idea of going somewhere even if the location isn't determined by the project, you know? Just yeah. like um where do we want to go? Well let's make it happen with the sabbatical and I'm excited yeah. about that. That's really cool. And I have to admit that, you know, a lot of the motivation for taking the sabbatical was ha getting to spend, you know, some several months in, in Europe and in Italy. So um, sure. that's definitely a, a, a motivator for sure. And uh, I had some collaborators from my postdoc days over in Trento. So that's how I ended up with them. And then they knew people in Naples. And so anyway, mm -hmm. that's kind of how those mm -hmm. connections were made. So. Mm -hmm. so did you already know the people in Italy the actual ones that you ended up working with, or was it like connections of connections, or how did that kind of happen? Yeah, so the first sabbatical I took was actually with um, people I had worked with as a postdoc for two years. So, mm -hmm. so I knew them. I mean, I hadn't worked with them in over a decade, but you know, we kept in touch reasonably well, and so I, I knew all of them. And um, and as I mentioned, the, the other professor who went on sabbatical himself was somebody I uh -huh. knew from grad school days. So I did know yeah. them. The second time around in Naples, it was kind of some peripheral people I had met in Trento during my first sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And I we were just kind of looking for a, a different place to go. Like we wanted to go overseas, but maybe not back to Trento. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I happened to just email them and Luciano, this person I work with, replied. He said, well, you know, we're actually right now in the process of building this new experiment, which is a lot like the work that I do here. And so it was kind of just a, you know, a good fit randomly. Yeah, kind of. that's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And so I didn't, the second, I guess the answer is the second time around, I didn't know the people as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I hadn't cool. really ever worked with them before. Yeah. I met them. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you guys knew of each other, mm -hmm. but didn't really know each other that well. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. That's nice. And it was going and great. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was going great until it got cut short. Right. Yeah. And how far in advance do you plan these things? Like arranging these collaborations? Yeah. Well, as you as you know, right, the the application for sabbatical is like the year a year before you mm -hmm. go, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think I probably first contacted. Well, the, the Trento group was easy because I was just kind of like, "Hey, could I come and spend some time there?" And they're like, yeah. "Sure, we re we remember you." Uh huh. Um, but for Naples, I think I started contacting them maybe almost two years before I went mm -hmm. on sabbatical. Because so you'd also want time to get the funding lined up and stuff, I see. Yeah, and they had to get some funding lined up and, um, exactly, and the funding, that's a whole other thing I'm sure we could talk about. But, uh, but yeah, so I think it was at least 18 months ahead of time I, I mm -hmm. contacted them. And, mm -hmm. you know, like for my application, I got some letters of commitment from them mm -hmm. that spelled out, or basically letters of invitation, um, mm -hmm. That didn't really spell out anything financially because it's too hard to predict that far in advance. Yeah. But they were basically saying, yeah, sure, we'd be happy to have you. 
CD here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. With uh, with funding for for my sabbatical, I. I hadn't really like thought that far in advance when I was applying for stuff, but then when 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 I was applying for funding, but then when we were planning the sabbatical, I was realizing that oh, these things that I want to do actually fit in this project, and so you know mm-hmm. we have funding. But I was like that, you know, in the future, I want to think about that in advance while I'm applying for the funding. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and uh, right, that's a good point. Um, and I, I kind of, well. If, for us, I guess, financially, we were just kind of, like, ready to go for it, kind of, mm-hmm. you know, the pay was about half, right? Mm-hmm. And we just had kind of saved up a little bit enough to make, to be able to scrape by for that year if we hadn't gotten really much funding. So you were you were planning to go regardless. Yeah. That and then, yeah, that makes sense. And then, you know, the funding that I ended up getting definitely didn't make up the other half of my salary but mm-hmm. it was like a travel it's covered travel and housing and things like that so mm-hmm. housing mm-hmm. is housing is always tough right so yeah totally actually for my first sabbatical I went on a website called sabbaticalhomes.com oh really and looked for the Boston part uh-huh. and just looked around and it turns out that there was a a couple who were also going on sabbatical, you know, with um, a few metro stops from where I was going to be working. Awesome. And um, so, yeah, we ended up just uh, renting their house out for a few months. And so it was just kind of random. I don't know if that, how well it works in general, but uh, it was kind of a random and uh, fortuitous hookup. Well, there. I'm writing it down. I'm going to, we're going to, because we, we've been, you know, planning to rent a furnished apartment or something, but mm-hmm. it hadn't occurred to me. I didn't know there was a website that had that kind I, of thing. That sounds awesome. I assume it still exists. This was <laughs> six or seven years ago. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it was nice because the house was fully furnished and, mm-hmm. you know, access to the university was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was cool. Cool. That's really neat. Yeah. So what, um, are you working on anything with sabbaticals? Well, I just took one in ni- I took my dip leave in 1920 mm-hmm. in 2020. Um, well ni- yeah ni- 2019 oh I see academic year 1920 yeah, yeah sorry <laughs> yeah academic year 1920 and so I'm not eligible for one till 23 24 the 23 uh-huh. 24 academic year okay which means gosh I guess that means I have to apply next fall though so I think the plan at this point is to probably go try to go back and do a have a do over of this Naples <laughs> sabbatical. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, because that project got delayed and the timing will still probably work out, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'll probably, since the finances work out, I'll probably just keep applying to the dip instead of a sabbatical mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. It, the review process does just go to the dean. Oh, okay. Instead, instead of going through a whole committee, of, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a much easier process. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. That's exciting. Your first spot. Yeah, yeah. I remember being super excited about, about mine. So I am super yeah. excited. Yeah. yeah. We're really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. We keep thinking ahead, like, where are we going to store our stuff and what? part of town do we want to live in and then we're like maybe it's too early to figure out all these things and then you know but right. it's, it's fun to think about them <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah um yeah well the thing that i'm kind of working on is you know what i i think for the timing of this sabbatical this is what i wanted to do was finish up all these projects and stuff mm-hmm. um but we, we kind of you know when we were thinking about it you know there's colleagues that i know in la that I could have maybe come up with some collaboration with. There's also cool schools in LA that it might be fun to teach a class or, you know, get some, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And um, I ended up deciding not to pursue any of those, but I'm kind of just interested in setting up these connections elsewhere. And Yeah, I um, think that's a great idea. And yeah. Yeah. It's a definitely a good, good time to to try to make those, yeah, to make mm-hmm. those connections for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I think this was the right thing to do this time, but I'm interested in in future times how to um, yeah where where we might want to go and what what kind of connections and uh, interactions with other people in universities might be yeah might be good to do. 
Are there people from your like grad school days who you worked with who you maybe could work with in the future? Yeah, or? I definitely think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be, I mean, that'd be a lot of fun to, to reconnect with them. And I, I could imagine it being like learn some new technique in their lab or, or, or yeah, yeah. Uh, there's mm-hmm. all kinds of things or do some particular project that we could do together there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There's lots of, lots of possibilities. So I'm yeah. excited about that. I did. And yeah. And you're talking about teaching and I did end up one of the other kind of funny things about my first sabbatical when I got to Trento, um, I thought I would just be working in the lab and, mm-hmm. you know, and when I got there, the kind of the first day or two, um, my friend, co- co- my friend and colleague, Rita, she said, well, actually, you know, as part of the uh, funding, you have to teach <laughs> about uh, 20 hours of classes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, my goodness. Because <laughs> they do everything by hours. Over uh-huh. there. So, um, so that was a surprise. Um and in the end, it ended up being, and it was for graduate classes, which I had not taught wow. really much in the past. And so that was a surprise. It ended up being totally That's, fine, yeah. um, you know, kind of a seminar style class. Okay. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Is it like 20 hours over the course of the semester? Is that how the hours are measured or what is that? Yeah. The, so the Italian system, at least in Trento, was, was kind of like a period of time where classes happen. And mm-hmm. you could hold the class whenever you wanted. Oh, however many total hours your class needs, you yeah. schedule. So Interesting. I just ended up, I think it was maybe, I think I just ended up doing four hours a week for five weeks. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. Cool. So and did you up. have to develop this class or, or did it already exist and you could build on it? How'd that go? I was nervous about that when I got, when I found this out, but it, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that I could just give a, a kind of a seminar lecture series in experimental gravity, which is my field. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, it's not like I had to teach a specific quantum mechanics mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. electromagnetism for for graduate students. It was more, more open-ended. And so that was nice. And it was also um, taught in English, which was... That's good. I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, That's fascinating. And so how was it teaching at a totally different university in a whole different country? Was What, what was that like? Very different. Very mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. I would say, well, the systems are just so different. There's no, there's no homework in Italy at the graduate okay. level. And there's, they just pass these exams. I see. And I didn't even have to have an exam for my class since it was mm-hmm. just a seminar style. So I tried to assign a few things, but... I basically got kind of chuckled at because <laughs> <laughs> that's not how things work here. Yeah, that's it was funny. very different, and I think how the whole. Um, I mean, I think there are lots of cool things. I, I like the way they do everything, or many things with oral exams over there. I think that's mm-hmm. a really mm-hmm. uh, great way to see what you know your students really know. But the whole active learning um, mm-hmm. style of teaching, I don't think, has really caught on. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was trying to do a few kind of, you know, more active um, classroom activities. And the students just really were kind of, some of them were into it, but some of them were just like, what is this? <laughs> it would yeah. be, I, I mean, that'd be just out of left field if you had never exactly. ever done that in a classroom before. Yeah. 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 That's so interesting. That sounds like, I mean, in the end, do you feel like that was a, ended up being a valuable part of the experience? Or Actually, I, I do. Um I was able to put together this this core actually since I had all this time right um, to really you know because the research side there was no real set schedule on that so mm-hmm. I could really develop this kind of course that I probably would have never you know thought about doing yeah and I still have you know those notes and slides and things mm-hmm. like that so I do think it was worthwhile in some ways it was definitely a shock and also in naples <laughs> i have to say also in naples that happened too when oh we really got there, they're like well what course would you like to teach next semester since you have to teach like 30 hours or whatever and, mm-hmm. um i never did have to do that because <laughs> because of the pandemic so yeah yeah, yeah. that's so interesting it, i wonder if it's just expected and therefore not even talked about that's what and i was wondering that particular too. academic when I was, 
Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. In Boston, there was no such expectation. Mm -hmm. I showed up mm -hmm. there and worked in the lab pretty much on my own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a couple other, maybe with one or two other people. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so yeah, it sounds like oh, I hope you have a hope you can make some connections. That'll be really cool. So yeah, no, oh, I, I I mean I'm. There's plenty of, there's just infinite options I'm excited about exploring. Totally. So, and then, um, yeah, I was, I was hoping to kind of somehow involve my students here in some of the sabbatical work mm -hmm, somehow. That's mm -hmm. kind of a longer term goal is how can I bring this experience and, you know, make it relevant and involve some of my undergraduate researchers here. So I don't know yeah. how to do that yet, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question because, you you know, they probably are taking classes here so they can't go to Italy for the whole semester or anything, but they could somehow. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be really interesting. Yeah. They could and work I do, remotely. Or, yeah. Right. And I do have a, a couple domestic research collaborations as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I could go do a sabbatical at those places and it would be easier to involve students. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I actually have a student since all of her classes were remote this semester still, she actually just spent three weeks in uh, Indianapolis with our collaborators. Which oh, great. She wouldn't have that's been able awesome. to do in a normal semester. Right. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But um, but then some part of me is just like, well, I kind of want to go somewhere more exciting for my sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know that's true. If you were close by, they could go join you for spring break or something. But Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Well, thanks. It's so great to hear your perspective since you've, you know, done it a few times and yeah, tried different and things out. So, how was the application process? Was that was that yeah, going smoothly for you? It was smooth. Yeah, I mean, I um, I talked to other people in the department who had, you know, done sabbaticals recently, and we have someone in our department who's on the sabbatical review committee or whatever mm, it is. So, mm -hmm. um, I asked him in particular to t check it out, and so um. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I think it all went smoothly. I guess I, I don't get the final approval until next month, but I think it should go fine. Yeah, usually the year-long ones, from what I hear, the year-long ones are easier to get because it I've saves the university money somehow. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, Yeah. so I'm looking forward to the official word, but I feel like it's right. going to go Is smooth. it still, <laughs> since it's been a couple of years, is it still just like a couple pages of description mm -hmm. of what you're going to be yeah. doing? Yeah, you write two pages description, and it seems like the main important thing is that you s explain what benefit you'll bring to HSU. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that can be through publications all kinds of things. or collaborations yeah. or yeah. podcasts. And, and exactly, <laughs> exactly, podcasts, right. yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I read in other people's and then I put in mine. You know, if you're writing a paper, well, that's getting our name out there. That's getting our students on publications. That's finishing up a project so you can then get more funding to do another project. And all of that is mm -hmm. benefits. Yeah, great. Evidently. Yeah. So, yeah. So cool. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, CD. It's yeah, great to talk to you for having me. Uh, thanks for having me join you again. It's been yeah. Great. Yeah. Really great to have you back. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.